Welcome to Art is Talking, presented by Barnes & Noble. Today, I'm joined by Johnny Christmas, the creator of Swim Team and Gamerville, among other things. Johnny, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Josh. Really appreciate right. it. Of course, yeah. So we're going to start talking about Gamerville with the start of Gamerville. So can you tell us a little bit about where the idea for Gamerville came from and how you took that initial idea and cultivated it? Sure. Uh, I was just kind of thinking about ideas in general about... Um connectivity and you know connection and and so on and and the world that we live in with so many um devices and distractions and and I was the the initial idea was what if what if um I think the initial idea was like what if a town lost all power and all the all the kids in the town had to like kind of figure it out you know um being being native to a world of just you know of interconnectivity through devices and then um, as the idea started to, to spawn further and further, I started thinking about, um, oh, it would be cooler if it was just like one kid. And then um, and then uh, actually even going back and forth with my editor, actually, uh, you know, uh, the great Andrew Arnold. And he he suggested, well, what about like one kid in a camp? Like like it was going to first it was going to be a camp full of kids. Yeah, the town went to a camp full of uh, technologically uh, disconnected kids. And then, uh, then Andrew was kind of like, well, what about if it was just what about if he's the only one? And then, uh, and I thought about that for a bit and I was like, oh yeah, that'd be, that'd be really cool. Cause then it's just, then we could focus on instead of, um, cause before it was going to be a, how technology affects all these kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but thinking about it that way, it was like, oh, what if, how, how would technology affect this one kid? So, mm -hmm. um, the road to Gamerville was like, there was like many different, many different iterations that, that happened before this final one uh, came. Cause I, I think I, um, sent the pitch in for it originally back in 20. 19 i think 2020 um no 2019 so so it's been it's been it's been a while and i'm curious so as you're bantering these ideas around and, and developing it are you also drawing outlining sketching are you or are you just thinking about it and and where it's going to go yeah at that point i'm just thinking about ideas and because um i think i, I might have done a few sketches but I try not to draw too early because I fall in love with with drawings. So with ideas, you can you can throw them around. What about this? What about that? You could um you could kick those around a lot more than once you start seeing um a face. I think that's why you know like when you have a when you foster a a, a puppy or something, you're probably not going to give that puppy back. You just <laughs> you, know, you spent a week with it. So that's how it is when I start drawing. So I try not to see their faces as 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 you know. I keep that away as long as I can because then when I see them, then I then I get to know them. So we'll fast forward a bit to when you have this set story, you know where it's going to go. What were your first steps? And, and just, you know, Gamerville specifically, but also just as a storyteller in general, once you have that idea in place, what are your next steps? Do you start sketching? Do you start writing, scripting, outlining? What are the first steps for you? Yeah, the first thing I do is outline. So I, I'll start with the inception and then I'll write a very tight. Um, I try to build my writing like a seed like from very dense, small amount of writing. And then I expand further and further out until I get to a graphic novel. So the first things I'll write are almost like um, pitch documents, like, you know, um, just a paragraph that that talks about all the stakes, all the emotional, the things that are important externally and, and internally uh, for the story. And then I'll expand out to an outline. Uh, and like that, that outline will be like four pages of the story, you know, not broken down into panels or anything, just like just the story. And then from there, I'll expand out to a proper outline, um, really, really fleshed out. And then I write my script and then I'll draft that a few times. So kind of the thing that I do is I, I try to keep myself in the story as long as possible and start and I start thinking about it, thinking about it over you know, days, weeks, you know, in different iterations and let the story kind of expand and expand, expand in my mind because um, over lunches and dinners and breakfasts, you, you kind of think about the story more and more and more. And and I even um, lately, I've been writing longhand more to to kind of, I, I find, I've re rediscovered that writing longhand is very close to drawing for me. Mm. And it's something about the movement of of the hand and putting down these these marks that um, approximate real life or feeling or or what have you. So writing and drawing have gotten really close closer with my longhand, and um, and then so I'll write the whole thing out longhand, draft it longhand, and then I'll go back and and I'll write it like a script, um, like a movie script almost. 
But at that point, I start contracting when I write the, the, the final scripts. So this seed has been growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's like just massive amounts of paper and reams of, of writing. And then when I write my, my final script, I almost get it down to like skeletal. Mm -hmm. uh, because at this point, I, I know the story so well. And I know all, how all the characters um, feel that my script can be really tight because it's almost like I'm just adding water, you know, because just that thin line, I know exactly what that's referring to. So when I draw, I can expand out from there. I find that fascinating. I, I always love asking like creators who are both writer and artist where those two intersect. Uh, it sounds like you do all of your writing first. Are you also sketching while you're doing this, this freehand writing and all that stuff? Or do you save that until you're actually getting into it and, and doing the panels yeah save it because okay. as, the, as the artist and as a visual person when I'm before you start drawing something you have an idea of it in your head you can kind of see it you know as you draw it it starts to you clarify the idea so it's not exactly what you had in your mind but it, it becomes more um realized as you draw it but you have an idea so when I'm writing something down it's I, it's the same thing I have the same like I can see it sort of so to draw it, I don't need to draw it to see it when, when I'm writing. So and writing is faster than drawing. So I can like, you know, write down a bunch of stuff a lot faster than I could draw a bunch of stuff, but I'm, I'm still seeing it. So I save the drawing until until the thumbnail stage. And at that point, and even thumbnails aren't really drawing. It's mostly just seeing how the graphic novel works visually to make sure the page turns work, where the characters work, where the ca where your camera um, is set. And then, uh, and then penciling when, when I get down to real drawing. And that's, that's like, at that point, it's such a, a treat and a delight to be able to, to draw something because I've lived with this stuff for so long. So then when I'm starting to do character sketches and, and, and penciling, then I, then I get to really know the characters. And then I go back into the script and rewrite because like I said, when you see the face of your puppy, you, you kind of know that you kind of thought you knew who they were and then you see how they react and you go, oh no, that's how they really feel now that I've seen it. And then you have to adjust, uh, which is great. Because then at that point, the characters start taking over. Mm -hmm. Even actually in the scripting, the characters start taking over. After a while, they start pulling the things. You kind of know where you want the thing to go. But they have a say. After a while, the the, the more they grow and build and become, they, they kind of take over your story. Speaking of character, uh, and using Max as an example, the protagonist of, uh, of Gamerville, so you presumably have him all written out. Do you use like the written version of him? Do you do a character backstory before you draw him? Or what's your character creation process like? Do you sketch him and draw him at the same time or, or, or talk us through what would happen or what happened when you created Max? Yeah. So with Max, I, I had a, had an outline of just what happens to this guy, you know, what happens to this kid and, and, a little bit about who he was and, and who he is, but I kept it really rough. Um, and then as I started writing, I started getting more and more ideas of kind of who he was. But even before I started writing, the character design really did inform who he was. Because as I'm drawing his character, I'm starting to add like emotion to, to the way he's standing or the way he's looking. Emotion that I hadn't really thought of too much until... I started drawing and that kind of unlocks a different way of how I know how Max moves through the world and how he stands and how he, how he feels when these things are happening to him. So, so uh, the character design at that point starts becoming a whole different thing. The drawing really unlocks a whole different level of character design that the writing can't quite access. Um, but yeah, yeah, it just, and, and at that point I'm, I'm looking at, you know, kids fashion what they're wearing what's what's going on what's um so i tried to keep the character pretty um truthful to to you know what a kid of his age might be wearing or doing or or into um but yeah the drawing drawing really does help with that is there anything that you remember like in your creation of Max while drawing him that you realized, oh, like you discovered something new about him from the drawing process that you didn't necessarily have in his outline beforehand? Yeah, the lightning bolt in the uh, in the hair. That was, <laughs> that was not there. Because when you're when you're doing character design, you're trying to make every character as distinctive as possible. Um, you're trying, but a lot of times they just they just become distinct, you know, mm -hmm. um, but you don't even have to try after a certain point. But so I was just kind of thinking like, all right, Max Lightning, what would this, this kid is very confident in his skills and he's very much 
This is his big show. Going to Game Reveal is like his big show. So what's he going to do for his big show? He's going to try and find the coolest clothes. He's going to get the coolest haircut. He's going to try and do the, the coolest stuff, you know? So there's that scene in the book where, where, you know, he's getting ready for it. And he's got his sunglasses. He's got his lollipop. And I was like, he's got to have a lightning bolt shape. <laughs> so, so the drawing really does unlock a whole bunch of that stuff, which is great because then when he gets to camp, you have the um, the leftovers of that life, and the the lightning bolt is the last thing that mm -hmm. that stays with him from the, uh, the 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 last you know remembrance of his old life in this new this new um, place that he's not very thrilled to be in. I love that. So I want to cut to the gaming aspect called Gamerville, obviously a big video game component. Uh, are you a gamer yourself? Were there particular games that inspired the, the, the game in the series Lone Wolf of Calamity Bay? Uh, were there particular games that you played growing up maybe or even nowadays that inspired this game setting? Yeah, I was thinking a lot about the Zelda games. When I was, mm. when I was a kid, I really loved playing um, Zelda and um, and all the Mario games. All the like very, I had the... I had the um, retire from gaming pretty early I had to hang up my my jersey in the rafters because I would get um kind of dizzy which is kind of what inspired Max's dizziness but my dizziness was from like playing games too too much I would get mm. kind of like spinny um so after a while I, I just I just had to stop but I remember those games fondly and I remember the expansive nature of like um falling into them and um you know and if I if I didn't get dizzy I don't know I don't know how much I don't know if I would have become an artist. Like I was really, really into video games. I think all the time that I threw into art might have been taken up elsewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, so then then the game itself was mostly inspired by um, the story itself, the story around Max um, really gave me breadcrumbs on how the game should play out and how it should be in dialogue with the, the rest of the... Uh, the graphic novel so the game world itself uh was that sort of well i guess you mentioned you already had it all outlined so you knew what this world was going to look like which could then inform the gaming world but was the design process for video game world essentially the same as the the real world were, were you creating them in conjunction with each other or did one come before the other yeah the uh when i first started writing they all were coming up independently but then as soon as the story started to um, gel and started to and I started to feel like I had legs, then they all needed to reference each other. Um, writing Gamerville was like writing four different stories. I had to write the real world, um, like his his day to day real world. Then I had to write the unreality of uh, Calamity Bay. Then I had to write Camp Reset, which was kind of an unreality in its own of its own. You know, it's it's not your day-to-day -day life it's not it's not how um you're not it's, you're not referencing the things that you reference in the in the real world at summer camp and then the the game of the the world of the video game tournament and that heightened you know the bigness of that so every time something changed in one of those worlds i had to go back and kind of rewrite all the other ones it was like writing a book four times because they all had to um in a subtle way so that the reader doesn't feel it uh, well the the reader feels it but doesn't quite see it hmm. so each part of the story should reference another part of the story so that they're all kind of moving um together at the same time there's a lot of joy in rereading gamerville too because you you start to see more of those interconnectivity like like the opening scenes in calamity bay where he goes underground and later on at camp when it, it just there's so many nice parallels that, that bring the story to even more add more layers to the story um Again, assuming all intentional, these aren't things you just stumble upon. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I thought a lot about the the cave, like his his cave of of his room, the cave, the underground in the video game that he was mm. afraid of, the the cave at camp, you know, and the dark cavernous space of the 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 tournament, you know, where there's this this you know light in the the very central part of it. So that that's one that's one um example of interconnectivity and, and trying to have echoes throughout each of the um each of the experiences that that max goes through on this journey mm -hmm. 
So before we get to the drawing uh, component of our interview here, I want to ask you about Watson J. Wolf, just because I love how he looks and his tie, and he's just the most dapper wolf I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so I I'm fascinated to hear about your creation process with him, but also how you felt he needed to reflect Max. Was he an extension of Max's personality? Just Watson J. Wolf in general. <laughs> Yeah, I love Watson. He's such a great <laughs> character. So uh, yeah, the designing Watson was very. There was a there was that was a long road because he wasn't a museum guard at first. What was he at first? He was, well, he was so many different things, and he was so many different types of wolves. Then I settled on the uh, the uh, African golden wolf because I thought, oh, I've never seen like a golden wolf before. That that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That that make him kind of stand out. And then the museum guard, I thought like, oh, that's so cool because museum guards are, you know they do this like great job but they're i've never seen them like like um lifted up in 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 media I, my mom she she had uh, many jobs and one of her jobs at one point she was a museum guard mm -hmm. which was really really cool um because it gave us something gave us a connection of art to talk about because her her love of art started to expand a, a lot more at that point um but yeah so i was thinking like okay like all right so he's a museum guard and he's this wolf and then, then the tie. I don't. I don't know. I just. I love that tie. I'm. I'm glad. Me I'm glad too. <laughs> you picked up on a tie because it was just. It's. Uh, it's. It's just like signal of professionalism, but it's got these stripes and it's got a little bit of personality. And um, yeah. And and do I make him like kind of a ferocious looking wolf? Do I make him like kind of a? And then once uh once I got the sense of Wilder's uh wolf, mm -hmm. I thought okay, well, uh, Watson's got to look uh, a lot more um. A lot more kind of friendly and a lot more just kind of, you know, and, and gave him the name Watson to give him a, a little flair of a, a helpful intellectual, you know, I think before it was like Waylon J. Wolf, you know, a lot more just kind of freewheeling, but I was like, no, no, Watson, Watson, the better way to go. So there, it was, there was, a, that was a long, long journey on, on bringing, bringing Watson and drawing him really did bring it out because if I would have left it at just writing it, it I don't know what it would have been like, but drawing, <laughs> version after version of of uh watson really brought him to the fore and you know do, does he have a stripe on his pants does he have badges does he have like what kind of um does he have epaulets or like what, what's the deal with this museum you know and i thought okay let's pare it down and keep him very friendly and relatable but a little bit of personality with that time every time he showed up i was like oh watson's back like this is great <laughs> so i wonder if we can move on to the to seeing you draft some art seeing you draw a bit uh to see what your process is like so i'm gonna let you go ahead and share your screen share this screen are we rolling no not yet here we go share there it is awesome nice okay. so i guess if you just want to start by I mean, what what feels natural for you as the artist when you come to the page? What are you thinking? Of? Like, what 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 are your first steps to get started here? First steps. My first steps are generally gestural. You know, I try to get like um, try to get the personality of the character through gesture. So, let's see. Let's get someone with their hands on their hips, head tilted back, like this kind of direction here with the with the spine, let's see, like a kind of like a, that kind of like, kind of defiant shoulders back, head back kind of deal going. So that's that's usually my first stop is gestural. And then uh, let's see, let's tune this back a bit and build on top of that. And then let's see, let's let's go with Max. Um, so from here, I just kind of get the general feeling and shape for max i'm a real big underdrawer i know um a lot of folks are really great with just like inception and they boom they knock it right down and i've I've always been kind of all those years of life drawing have, have built um have gotten me really into getting the armature underneath <laughs> because when i go on top sometimes it's a little stiff when i'm doing the character okay let's see i think this brush is a little big no, that's what's going on. All right. And then, all right, get him a little mischievous uh, eyebrow there. I was going to say that smirk is great. <laughs> <laughs> and then, 
let's see. So that's a that's that's pretty much oh, his little little bumps of his hair there. And then from there, I could just kind of tune this one back. Mm. And then I start getting a little more into his face. Eyes are the windows to the soul, as they say. <laughs> I've heard it said. So let's see. So he's he's gonna he's gonna be looking kind of a little bit at us. Little nose. A little bit more smirky. So as you're drawing, you can improve all along the line. You know, you can you can add things, you can change things, you can expand things. And I and I generally like I like to spin my 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 characters around as I draw. <laughs> kind of like a, something that started when I was a when I was working on paper primarily. It was it was really interesting. I would like I couldn't tape down my paper anymore on the boards because I would just spin <laughs> the paper around and move my because I because I was inking with brushes. So if I, you know, I could I could you know a lot of times I had these mis mishaps where I would stick my my uh the palm of my hand into the brush ink and then things would go really bad so uh, <laughs> so i had to like learn how to turn the paper away from the ink so that i wouldn't get my palm in it all right so here's his his, his trusty headphones this is pre-camp max where he's just kind of living his best life he's preparing for all of his dreams to come true at Gamerville, he does not yet know what mom has in store for him <laughs> <laughs> and what the world has in store for him in the in this in the uh, form of camp reset, technology free summer camp, where the big part of his adventure and growth will begin. All right, so get some knuckles going on there, little palm. I encourage all of you who are are watching that drawing hands, which you're not going to see. You're just you're just seeing some knuckles. Uh, work on your hands. A lot of people uh, shy away from hands, but I say uh, tackle it head on. All right, let's. Since I'm talking about hands, let me get some. Uh, let me get some some waist. He's gonna he's gonna grab onto his waist with this. This one. Oh, what's going on here? All right, here we go. All righty. Oh, that hand's a little gnarly, but see, that's why you got to. That's why you got to practice your hands. I was gonna say I've seen far worse hands in in <laughs> all forms of visual narratives, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially those uh, AI six fingered hands. Oh. <laughs> oh. nightmare fodder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, we gotta get away from that eraser. Oh, why am I? There we go. Let's get back to the. Uh, I've been drawing with a brush here, but mm -hmm. um, you guys can draw with anything that you like. I'm drawing right now on Clip Studio Paint, but you know I drew many years uh, traditionally with pen and ink and brush. So draw any way that you like. Whatever is fun for you, whatever gets you drawing, is the best way. There is no best way except for the way you do it. <laughs> there we go. All right, let me clean up his his hair. You know, a young gamer has got to have his hair looking right. There we go. So get his uh get his lightning bolt there. So that's that's kind of an example of a quick little Max. Oops. To get his this kind of how I draw our friend Max here, mm. pre pre camp Max on his way to, at least in his mind, to glory. That's right. <laughs> and I think with this, I was I was really into him having um, he had like I think he had did he have like a red shirt in the beginning and mm -hmm. and then um red accents on his on his um on his headphones. I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Very, um, very powerful color combination. You want to think about your color combinations. 
um, with with Gamerville as with Swim Team. It had the wonderful Hillary Jenkins do color on the book, but um, but the uh, initial character design, I I did the uh, colors on those just so Hillary would kind of know what I had in mind with with Max and his and his um the colors that I had in my head for mm -hmm. for for his outfit. And then I I didn't I left her free reign on the um camp reset um uh, outfit. I had a few suggestions, but for the most part, I think I think at first they were like blue in, in her initial <laughs> An initial uh, attempt, and then I was thinking, well, maybe more of the khaki. But then mm. from there, you know, gave her free reign to contribute to the color there. So there's a a quick little roam. I mean, uh, <laughs> Max. That's great. So much personality. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why I think the uh, the gesture underneath is so important because mm -hmm. from there you can do, um, you can build so much mm -hmm. from from your gestures. So, let's say hypothetically you were going to create a new character, either in the Gamerville universe or a brand new story or whatever. What mm -hmm. as you're exploring a character's look for the first time, what does that process look like? Could you maybe dabble in trying to create a new face here? Boy, let's let's see. What can we do here? <laughs> uh hmm. All right, let's let's brainstorm here a little bit. So uh in Lone Wolf of Calamity Bay, there are you know the original, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, the the original Lone Wolf of Calamity Bay, I was trying to find solitary animals. Mm -hmm. And before I got to the wolf, which is, you know, once you get to the wolf, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. That that's that has got to be the one. Um, but some of the original ones were the, the one that I settled on for a while was a duck billed platypus, which I did not know <laughs> was a solitary animal until the internal <laughs> pony cell as I was like looking around. And I don't quite really remember what one looks like right now as I'm drawing which is better actually, because then you get more uh, freedom for uh, for character design. So let's draw a duck -bill platypus video game character. If, you know, Calamity Bay was the duck -bill, duck bill platypus of Calamity Bay. I really hope he ends up with a tie, but I'm not gonna tell you what to do. <laughs> there we go, make it collaborative, here we go. <laughs> Instead of um, striped, <laughs> so we'll go checkered. There it is. <laughs> okay, so now, so we've got a we've got a rough under drawing of our duckbill platypus, and let's see the next layer. Let's see, let's let's think about eyes again. Windows to the soul. I don't know what the eyes look like, but I'm gonna give him sort of rings, like a kind of a deeper penetrating kind of stare you know uh, now do we do we think he should look confused should he look confident should he look maybe a little worried like oh my goodness am i going to be able to save this this <laughs> flooding city and then turn down this the opacity here on the background give him a little with uh our friend Watson, I gave him a little spiky hair thing mm. to reference Max's hair thing. So we have some echoes. It's nice to have some visual echoes all throughout the piece so that your reader at a glance will quickly identify our friend Watson with our friend Max. Okay. Hmm. Let me give him some kind of stress lines, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe. And, and this is the thing about drawing, it starts to, as you're drawing, things start to happen. So as I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, let's get his, let's get him a little worried. He's just like, he doesn't know what's going to happen <laughs> with this this city. And let's may, say our duckbill platypus is not a museum guard. 
but uh what's a what's a good profession to have for a solitary character in a sinking city he looks um, like a banker to me but <laughs> okay well let's give him a little top hat <laughs> we're, gonna go, we're going monopoly banker <laughs> uh, okay. he's very worried that his big bags of money are gonna float away with the sinking city <laughs> so like any good banker he's not gonna get on out there and you know you know get his you know get into all these crazy adventures he's gonna utilize his resource which is money so he's going to hire people to to go do it so this is going to be a much less entertaining story because it's going to be about this guy behind a desk <laughs> <laughs> making calls fervently making <laughs> <laughs> and he's alone in his giant duck pill what what are they what kind of lair i would imagine it's a watery type lair mm -hmm. like a beaver's type lair So he's there. Oh, he's got the suit too. Very nice. Yeah, he's got to have a suit. He's That's right. Yeah. Professional. All right. <laughs> so he's on the horn. Let's give him the uh, classic animated character three finger, I mean, uh, three finger, one thumb sort of situation. That's a little nubbin, not a finger here. And he's on the phone. You know, just kind of like trying to make sure. And of course, he's he's got like the latest, you know, the latest type of phone. <laughs> <laughs> I leave that to our our um to your imagination whether you're an iPhone or a uh, an Android type person, whichever phone you you think best. But it's just going to be a brick, <laughs> a technological brick. And uh, okay, so let's see. All right, let's let's get rid of that layer. Uh, so that's kind of what I, I'm thinking, but being an artist, of course, now I, I want to improve on him a little bit and get those eyes a little more clarified. I'm not more worried, kind of bigger, a lot more emotion there, a lot more panic. Ay, 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 my money. No, the city is thinking again. Who do I call? <laughs> Who do I blame? <laughs> I love seeing this personality develop as you like. He just becomes more and more defined. It's really cool to see. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really it's a really fun part of the process, and that's why I leave it for last. Because once once this starts to happen, it's so hard to go back and like throw all this stuff away because. The longer we spend with this this uh, duckbill platypus, the more we know him, you know. And once you know him, to know him is to love him. So you mentioned that earlier iterations he was going to be a duckbill platypus. I assume you never set out drawing a duckbill platypus, though. No, I had a my first duckbill platypus was a drawing of Max in a duckbill platypus outfit. <laughs> I, I was, it was it started with like voiceover mm. and i was trying to think of a way to have us quickly recognize him as as the duckbill platypus so i was thinking maybe he would have an avatar that he built that kind of looked like him at, in a duckbill platypus suit <laughs> and i also always loved the tanuki suit in the mm. um super mario brothers 3 the the flying Mm -hmm. you know raccoon like a uh, creature from japan so i was thinking the the duckbill platypus would kind of have a little bit of that to him let's see can we can we improve where can we improve on our duckbill platypus and is how do we make him more bankery i don't know he's looking pretty good to me <laughs> uh, do we do we improve the hat you can always do like a little bit of a, no, no, a, a smaller hat will make him look too, um, too modest. <laughs> this guy, this guy's gonna save his town one phone call at a time, which is, which is very noble. 
shout out to all the bankers out there. Especially of duckbill platypus kind. Yes. <laughs> all right, let's pull this this phone back a little bit from his bill. And he's very, very concerned about bills being a banker. <laughs> A plus for that. <laughs> and then, you know, when you're goofing around like this, that's when you could kind of come up with names. Like maybe we call him, um, like Bill would be a very easy way to go, but you could start playing with variations on that. You could start doing all sorts of, um, I like to write out a list of names. I, I have a list of names on my, um, my notes app, actually, of all these like, you know, names that I hope to use one day, or just if I hear a cool name, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kind of reference that. You beat me to it. I was going to ask you now if you had to name him, what would you name him? But I think, I think Bill, how do you do better than Bill? <laughs> duck Bill. <laughs> Here comes old Duck Bill. He was, his life was so happy before the city started to flood. <laughs> he had it all sorted out. And, uh, and that's how I would write him as well. You know, generally mm -hmm. speaking, you want to have your character start off thinking they know how the world's going to go. Things are great. Things are going well down at the bank. He's planning for his big vacation. Uh, and then, boom, the city's sinking. What? What What now? You know? And then that sets our duck bill, like just like we did with our friend Watson, uh, on an adventure to try and set the world right. But in so doing they learn something about themselves that actually makes them better than they were before they started. And that's a, a really fun key to, to storytelling that the thing that our character thinks is the worst thing that ever happened to them turns out to be maybe one of the best things that ever happened to them. So I can I can go on forever with this. We can uh, or <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> I was I got lost in his piercing blue eyes, <laughs> <laughs> making little apps on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of apps would a, a duckbill platypus have? I guess uh, we're you know we're brainstorming. We're going to think about water levels. You know <laughs> we're going to think about the bug levels of the town because I would imagine they eat bugs, right? I, would I think so. Yeah, so we gotta, the, this is very important. We're going to have a little app for that. I'm going to have an app for when you can wade in the water best. We have a little app for, hmm, sunlight. Uh, Needs that investment app too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little investment app. Good call. <laughs> Make it look like a little money bag. <laughs> bye, bye, sell, sell. Um, <laughs> every good... Duckbill, platypus. Oh, a lot of room here. Must keep an eye on investments. <laughs> it's the quote of the day. <laughs> see, yeah. So, uh, hmm, I guess, and uh, and then with design, of course, you're gonna make the apps look, make this look like a water drop, make this bug one look like a little bug. It's fun. Little legs. Pew, pew, pew. And I feel like these are the details too that would come across on the page. Like you would, if if there was a panel where you could see his phone, you would see these apps with those little icons. So it's neat to see this this development process. Exactly, and this sort of this is the sort of thing that happens only at the drawing level for me, mm. right? Because because you start you start you know making voices for them. You start kind of you know thinking about how they they do things. Like, I didn't know this guy was worried until we drew the worried eyes, right? And now that he's worried, that 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 begs the question, what's 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 our what's Duckbill worried about? You know? <laughs> then that that starts to expand Duckbill's character and Duckbill's world. And um that's why the drawing is is like another form of writing as far as I'm concerned. Did that, you know, you mentioned the lightning bolt with Max and, and that being something that came across, but did his personality change? Like, I, I assume you knew his personality pretty well as you went into drawing him, but as you were drawing him, did you realize, oh my gosh, he's also this? 
Yeah. Uh, when when Max started, he was a little bit more of a jerk. Actually. Mm. Oh. <laughs> was, um, and then um, as I started to draw him, I started thinking like, oh, this kid is not a jerk. He's he just, you know, he's just a bit lonely and he doesn't really have um, friends and he doesn't really kind of know how to go about them. And he thinks he's going to get these friends through achievement. Mm. Um, but. But yeah, so. Yeah, that 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 really changed his personality, and it really it it had a really big change on the story, because his his interactions with others weren't um, weren't very jerky. They were, if anything, you know, like he just kind of wasn't seeing the world very clearly. Mm. But he was he was not he was not um, he was not that jerky. I'm gonna give this this duck bill high water kind of pants because <laughs> he's walking around in a very um you know waterlogged world so but you know shoes have got to be you know this this person doing serious business out there so <laughs> gotta have gotta have um let's see we'll have some some kind of lace-ups broguing on the little toes and heels because that's important And I think I think we're gonna have to go with Argyle's socks mm. because you know always always ties and the Argyles this is a little a fun little happy accident is now doing the the sort of echo our tie mm. but instead of going in that direction they're going in another direction so when you're drawing you have all these fun little discoveries that kind of start to happen on your on your road to your character. And then another fun thing to do is that you can um oh I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Duckbill can't quite see him here, but I'm gonna give Duckbill suspenders. Yes. So we're gonna reference one suspender. Well, we're gonna cheat a little and reference two. You know, of course these suspenders would be much further back. Um but you know, uh, we're having a little fun here. So maybe Duck Bill, <laughs> maybe Duck Bill's shoulders are a little bit closer than than normal. So the suspenders would be a lot <laughs> closer. And and of course now we can do another pattern, right? So we have the argyles. We've got this kind of checker thing. Um, I would do vertical stripes, but then you wouldn't be able to see it so well mm. with the vertical striping. So let's go horizontal mm. striping. And of course, this gives your character some interesting sort of, you know, lines and patterns give a sort of a gray quality to mm -hmm. to your um, to your drawing. Mm -hmm. So, which which helps create a bit of dimensionality, creates more visually interesting stuff for your character. So yeah, you so there's that bill with a very very worried look, very <laughs> long arm. <laughs> and <laughs> you see uh, a very, um, and the phone's talking. I was going to say, even if we hadn't heard you talk through his evolution, just looking at him now, there's just so much you can read into him. So I, again, this this is cool to see this, this, uh, hype, this presumably named Bill come to life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was super fun. <laughs> I want to just briefly touch because you mentioned uh, with Max uh, discovering his personality uh, as you were drawing him and he wasn't such a jerk. How did, how in that like using that specific moment, how did you know that, you know, could you have also thought, oh, I need to draw him more like a jerk because he is a jerk. Like, how did you know to trust yourself that that wasn't his personality? Uh, like I said earlier, the uh, the characters start to tell you mm -hmm. um, who they are and what what they would do so if i tried to put really jerky things in his mouth he just wouldn't say them you know it just and and if i tried to make him look jerky like he just wouldn't it just wouldn't cooperate you know like uh so so yeah it's it's hard to it's hard to say because like i said about how my, my writing process starts as a seed and it expands and expands expands there's so much that's controlled about it that that it's interesting that once you get to certain points you just kind of you have to just follow what's what's actually true, you know, um, more so than what you 
plan for in those weeks and months. You know, you just kind of have to uh, um, go with it. I, I always use the um, Whitney Houston example uh, when she sung the um, national anthem at one of the Super Bowls or something. And so Whitney, just like the rest of us Americans, we, we've sung the national anthem a million times. We know how it goes. We prepared, we prepared, we prepared. But then on the day of, you get out there, you grab the mic and you, you know, you let it go. And however it happens on the day is how it happens. Now, with, with writing a book, it's a lot different because you can, you know, do lots of iterations. But it's kind of the same thing on a day when you when you know the right way to go at that point, even though you've sung it a million times, written it a million times, done it the same way a million times, you then know what the truth is and you have to just kind of go with that. And then the then the rest of the, then that really does change the rest of the story because if he's not saying jerky things, then people are reacting to him in a whole different way, right? They're, they're reacting to him with a lot more compassion, curiosity. They're not defensive anymore. They're just kind of like, oh, well, why, why do you think that, Max? Um, why, why would you do that, Max? Um, and then that opens up all the uh, characters a lot more too, because they're not defensive. They're they're open, and and Max is open, and everyone's open, and then you just you get uh, a much more rich story experience, mm -hmm. uh, and a much e a much more pleasant story to write because I have to live in that world okay. for a very long time. <laughs> Awesome. Well, this is so great. Is there anything else you want to throw out there before we wrap this up? Anything you haven't got to mention yet? Oh, man. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think this was really fun. I mean, wow, this is I got this was this was one of the funnest uh, interviews getting to doodle on our friend here, Bill, and bring him to life. And yeah, this, this was great. I'm I'm hoping I haven't seen the last of Bill, but even if it is, I'm glad to have met him. So thank you for, for bringing him into the world. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And, and yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who, uh, who watched this. All right. We are going to stop.